What's up guys, I'm Dazzy for Not Skimming and welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna be making a short chain blitz build and as far as I know I haven't made one short chain blitz build. So here we are with a short chain blitz build and as usual it's a chain blitz so we are gonna start by wounding the behemoths but we're gonna look for a chance because this guy is pretty nimble. Here we go, the chance. Let's wound the head immediately and after wounding maybe we break the part so that it goes down but maybe we don't have the chance so let's wait for an opportunity maybe interrupt maybe not i miss let's tempest the hat so that it breaks there we go easy let's start hitting again i'm gonna put my stacks to full and maybe do a slam after it gets up never mind it does not hit the slam hits but it's not on the part so it's not going to break apart but it's half hp anyways so let's see if it through that one easy tempest in and it's, get, it's getting shocked i was expecting a part break but yeah it's still fine it's still down so let's keep hitting it the slam is almost ready so let's get the slam ready get the pole stacked there we go evade through this one and slam right on the tail kaboom easy and it's dead it just got wounded but it got it dies pretty fast maybe because it's a terra behemoth and i have a shock weapon so let's just check out the build real quick Alright, so here's the build guys. As usual, no legendaries, no legendary stuff, and most importantly, no catalyst. And I deliberately did not bring any tonics with me, so catalyst will not be much of a use. And here, every single equipment is very easy to craft. There is Savit and Thunderdeep Dross, which might be a little bit hard. But the rest are just Gnasher, the normal Dross, and the Boreas, which are available at lower levels. So it wouldn't be much of a problem farming for this equipment. Savit weapon is the only weapon that I think is most suitable for a DPS build simply because it has a very good innate perk unlike the other short weapons that gives you innate perk that does not really contribute to DPS. So the Savit weapon will give you pulse as well as two finesse style slots. So with this finesse style slots and the innate perk, you can simply just add one piece of equipment that also gives you one finesse style slot, then you will get your cunning and pulse combo. So cunning and pulse combo is very good combo for end game builds, especially. But here we are not making end game build. Usually I will add Berserker and Predator into end game builds, but Berserker is from the Lady Luck and Predator is not really big and friendly. That's why I made this build without those two perks. So as for the playstyle, especially for weapons like the Chamberlain and Warpike, I usually start the battle by winning the Behemoths so that I can gain the effect of Aether Rush. And if you're not familiar with the term Aether Rush, it gives you 15% boost to damage, attack speed, movement speed, and stamina regeneration. And it's actually really good, especially the attack speed because attack speed is really important for me. And the other source of attack speed that we have here is the Molten and the Tempest to give you another 25%. So you gain a total of 40% attack speed with this build and it's actually very good. And if you take a look at the perk summary, I brought a city with me so that I can wound the behemoths faster by converting 50% of my part damage into wound damage and also brought sharpen with me to increase my part damage and another 100% when you don't show an attack. So these two combo will be able to help you wound the behemoths very fast, especially when you time it with pulse for a guaranteed crit, extra 100% part damage into wound damage. So you usually trigger this combo with the tempers or the chamberlain slam so with the slam or the tempest you might be able to instantly wound one part or maybe make it close to wounding so that you can keep your aether rush up at most of the times in the battle the perks left in the perk summary are tough and tenacious which is a very good combo for survivability and extra damage based on current hp and that sounds like the perk summary let's go through the build the thunder deep Drush helmet with acidic the ganasha with tough the Drosk with Molten and Boreas with Pulse. And here I'm using the Drosk I simply because I want to make a Shock Element damage build. Although if you want to switch the Lantern into anything else, that's fine. Fit in the Molten Cell. And as for the Omni Cell, Tempest might be the best choice because it targets unbroken parts and it really helps a lot with Acidic, which is converting part damage into wound damage. And yep, if you want to switch the Tempest to into anything else, that's fine. I would recommend using the Iceborne, maybe for survivability and anything else you want, but Tempest is the best choice for me. And here is the weapon with Cunning and Cunning, with the Reaper Stance and Hurricane Blitz. As for the mods, you can also switch to anything else you want, but I would prefer using the Hurricane Blitz. And that's the build, guys. Alright, so let's continue our battle to the next Behemoth. Let's see which Behemoth shows up. Well, it's a quill shot, but on a higher level. I was just about to get to the Amber Main, but the quill shot is higher on level, so... Oh, I almost fell up. Let's just get to the cool shot immediately and as usual, we are going to start the battle by wounding the behemoths. But since we still have that one Tempest stack, we are going to start with the Tempest and then wound the behemoths. As you can see, some of the damage from the Tempest is converted into the wound damage. 
So maybe we can wound this guy before it gets on the ground. There we go. Maybe break apart with that is two parts wounded. Both the ears are bleeding out. Yep, that's two part wounded. Let's just keep hitting it. Should be pretty easy. Even though it's level 18. If it through that one, easy. And start the pulse so that we can get the critical tempest. If it through that one. And start the pulse again. If it through, never mind, I got hit. Alright, maybe. If it through that one, never mind. I got stuck in between that ledge right there. And as you can see, the tempest wound the arms. And that is what I explained about the Tempest being able to wound Behemoth's parts easily. And there we go, the second cast of the unit effect. Because we keep evading through attacks and it's actually really good. That one is not gonna hit and this one is gonna hit. Tempest, kaboom, is gonna die soon. Evade through that one again, easy. Stack the pulse. Evade through, maybe not Tempest. There we go, easy. And as you can see, level 18 is dead pretty easily. Let's see what Behemoth we're gonna fight next. After I sip this Aid of Friends, let's just hope it's not the same Behemoth, but if it's a Terra Behemoth, I'm not going to fight it as well because I have the upper hand, and then I will go to the Ember Mane instead, instead of the Hellion because the Hellion is lower in level. So let's see what other Behemoth shows up. Let's just go here because it's gonna spawn here. Never mind. It's the Scar, so I have the upper hand, and as I've said earlier, we're going to fight the Ember Mane instead because I don't want to have upper hand in the battle and Ember is actually pretty easy as long as you know how to evade and light attack on the head to interrupt the behemoth alright as usual we're going to start by wounding the behemoth oh that's the wrong combo there we go keep hitting it wound it there we go alright here comes the next interrupt I was just maybe I should just evade there we go easy evade with the sharpen activated and as you can see one single tempest and the arms are wounded all right if it through that one i wanted to do the tempest kind of thing but i guess that's fine all right easy let's hit the back leg now wounded there we go let's keep hitting it what it's gonna do next we're gonna stack our special so that we can do the slam there we go kaboom easy only 2k well that's kind of low but i guess that's fine because some of the part damage are converted into wound damage so you're not going to see high numbers here but if it's the core damage you should be able to see high numbers easy and as you can see as long as you know how to interrupt this guy with the dash and then light attack it's not really a problem just make sure it does not get into this aether charts version unless it's going to start firing fireballs all right easy evade true Tempest. There we go. Easy. And as you can see, this build kills real fast. Not really that fast, but at least it's really good. It's fun to use. It hits real fast. And also the Tempest deals a lot of damage as well as the slam. You just don't see it because some of the part damage is converted into wound damage. And if you see the core damage, it deal around 4, 4k to 5k, even 7k. And that's all for the video. I hope you guys enjoy it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. It's free and you can always subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.